Good afternoon, friends. Honorable Finance Minister has presented Interim Union Budget 24-25 on 1st of February. This Interim Budget is a vote and account budget before full-fledged budget which is going to be presented in July 2024. As per me, this budget is inspiring, innovative and inclusive budget focusing on four broad parameter farmers, poor, women and youth and dreaming about, vision about India going to be Big Sit Bharat by 2047. Developed India. How come it is going to be possible? Some facts and figures. India is growing by 7%. Fastest ever economy worldwide. And this is what the forecast for future years also. Even International Monetary Fund has forecasted 6.5% growth for the Indian economy comparing China which is going to be around 5.1%. India is the fastest economy worldwide as on date and that is what we are progressing further. Other factor, India has become fifth largest economy surpassing the UK and now we are targeting going to be fourth largest economy by 2027 and a 7 trillion dollar economy by 2030. 2047 Amritkal, 100 years of independence for India. We are targeting that India going to be Big Sit Bharat with Sapka Saath, Sapka Bikas, Sapka Prayas. I'm hopeful because this budget is also giving certain uh, broad parameter and uh, if you look at the capital outlay capital expenditure which is being forecasted and which is budgeted increased by 11 percent up to 11.11 .11 lakh crore rupees around highest ever budget per se on capital outlay further the allocation which is being done for defense 6.2 crore lakh 6.2 lakh crore rupees for housing and road 2.78 lakh crore rupees railway 2.55 lakh crore rupees consumer affairs and agriculture agriculture is there 1.27 lakh crore rupees allocation and this is what the forecast but the broad parameter capital outlay Increased by 11% reaching up to 11.11 .11 lakh crore rupees highest ever. This is the brief background of this interim budget 24-25. We know there is no change in income tax rate, indirect tax including custom duty. No change is being made. No change in threshold exemption etc. So nothing is being done with taxation rate. This budget is the last budget before general election. Aisa lag raha tha ki kuch populist announcement ho sakti hai. But nothing is being done by Honorable Finance Minister. And she has focused on fiscal consolidation. So fiscal deficit which is now 5.8% now targeted to be 5.1% by 2025. So, Honorable Finance Minister has majorly focused on fiscal consolidation, boost economy, develop infrastructure and take India to a growth roadmap and wanted to be Bixit Bharat by 2047. Of course, with Sapka Saath, Sapka Bikas, Sapka Prayas. Coming back to GST related changes in finance bill 2024. Now there are only three clauses. Clause number 11, 12 and 13 
in finance bill pertaining to changes made in GST law. The first change pertaining to input service distributor. I would like to give you background. Then I will discuss what all changes are being proposed by Finance Bill 2024. You know in the background, there are two concepts prevailing. One is called cross-charge and one is called ISD, Input Service Distributor. When cross-charge is applicable, when there is actual element of supply of service, by one person to another and they are distinct person under same PAN number. So cross charge is applicable when there is actually element of supply of service. Of course among distinct person under same PAN number. Yani cross charge is a different concept. When supply of service ho rahi hoti hai. So supply of service kya? Main a company who or made a char registration hai, having four registration. So if one registered unit under same PAN number supplying services to other registered unit under same PAN number. So we four are distinct person under same PAN number. And when we are giving services, what services? Under cross charge, we have seen that uh, head office, our CEO, CFO, common HR, IT accounts team is sitting and they are looking after and supervising operation for all four registered unit. Thereby, it is contemplated that there is supply of service by these uh, top, you know, managerial personnel, CEO, CFO, common HR, IT accounts team sitting at head office and looking after overall operation. So there is element of supply of service, deem supply, entry to schedule 1. This is the one concept, cross charge. And we all know that cross charge chargeable to GST got clarified. Now, what happened with other concept? Input service distributor. ISD is not providing any service. ISD is only distributing credit on common input services. So this is the big difference between cross charge and ISD. And uh, what we have seen in the past, you must be recalling 58 GST council meeting and thereafter the circular number 199 dated 17th July 2023 got issued. In the past, if any office of a supplier of goods or services procuring getting uh, tax invoices under section 31 for common input services so for understanding this isd concept let's take an example that uh, i'm uh, a company and i'm having head office in delhi and i got three different unit in three different states Maharashtra, Karnataka, West Bengal and we all are separately registered under same PAN number. So maybe Delhi I am having corporate office or head office by whatever name called. It need not be head office also. So what happened for common input services, this uh, Delhi corporate office is getting the invoices from supplier of service. And which is commonly used by all four, including Delhi, registered unit and the same PAN number. And they are distinct person. So what happened? Invoice is being raised to the Delhi corporate office for all the services provided to four registered unit, including Delhi corporate office. Whether the Delhi can take full credit? Answer is no. So what happened? The credit which is pertaining to other three registered units need to be distributed. And that is possible through a mechanism of ISD, Input Service Distributor. So what happened? Delhi has to take ISD registration, take this credit of common uh, 
input services procured from a supplier and distribute the credit to other recipient unit for their utilization. And there was a prescribed formula as per section 20 of CGST Act read with rule 39 of CGST rules. Now, having said that, what is the big change? In 50th GST Council meeting read with circular number 199, dated 17 July 2023, we have seen in the past that the company need to take ISD registration, but they have not taken ISD registration because it was not obligatory. And they have distributed credit through a cross-charge mechanism, which was not correct. But uh, Circular has given a uh, go-ahead, Circular number 199, that in case in past, though you have distributed credit through cross-charge method, because ISD was not obligatory. So they have said we are not going to create any problem if it is being distributed through cross-charge method. But now what is the big change? In the light of 52nd GST Council meeting, it was stated and recommended by GST Council, there has to be compulsory registration for ISD and distribution of credit. So this Finance Bill 2024 has made respective changes. First, they have amended the definition of ISD under section 2, subsection 61 of CGST Act. And then they have substituted, completely substituted, section 20 of CGST Act. And what are the crux of changes made? First, definition of ISD. Now, in definition of ISD, one of the important aspects which you must take a note of it. ISD is an office of supplier of goods or services. Procuring uh, tax invoices, a reference of section 31 is being omitted now, including the services procured under section 9, subsection 3, and section 9 subsection 4 of CGST Act. So what is this change? Take a note of it. Prior to this amendment, we have seen that ISD was not able to discharge RCM liability, reverse charge liability on input services which may be under section 9 subsection 3 or section 9 subsection 4. They were not in a position. So what we have seen in the past that they used to take one normal registration, pay the RCM liability, take the credit and then cross charge to ISD registration, which is separate registration. And then ISD distributing the credit to other recipient unit under same PAN number. This is what we have seen in the past. Some of the company has followed like this. So challenge watch that RCM liability could not be paid by ISD registered unit. Now this is being simplified. So ISD is the office of supplier of goods or services, which is procuring a common input services invoice so means uh, any supplier and a forward charge raising invoice to ISD so let's say security services which is being provided for all four registration and common invoice is being raised to Delhi corporate office GST charge by security service provider so this is called forward charge forward charge method this is forward charge method now now, now, next part, there may be a case that advocate is providing services to this uh, ISD corporate office. So, advocate is raising invoice for a common input services, which is being given for all four registered unit. 
so now what happened previously isd was not able to discharge rcm liability but as per this amended definition under section 2 subsection 61 now isd can discharge rcm liability also take the credit also and distribute this credit as per section 20 which is isd distribution of credit in a manner as may be prescribed so section 20 got completely substituted now it is clearly saying compulsory registration for isd unit you can't do cross charge which we were doing in the past so from a date to be notified once this finance bill 2024 is being passed they are going to notify so it is prospective let's bear in mind prospectively so from a date to be notified if you are a office of supplier of goods or services procuring common input services then either under forward charge or under rcm you need to take compulsory registration and distribute this credit to your distinct person other unit registered under same pan number that is how the concept and how to distribute that would be prescribed because rule 39 which was there because of substituted uh, section 20 rule 39 going to be again either going to be amended or substituted but from a date to be notified so first change right clause number 11 and clause number 12 of finance bill 2024 now coming back to clause number 13 a new section section 122a is proposed to be inserted and what is this uh, new section this is talking about penalty on whom the person who is manufacturing goods specified goods as per uh, notification under section 148 they are being asked as a special procedure special procedure for taking registration for the machine on which they are manufacturing this specified goods so you would be recalling what is this uh, special procedure specified goods so one notification 30 oblique 2023 dated 31st july 23 that got rescinded by notification number 3 oblique 2024 central taxes 5th of january 24 and then new notification 4 oblique 2024 dated 5th january 2024 specified goods like tobacco and pan masala so these are the specified goods why this special procedure for registration of that machine on which manufacturing going to be taken place for these specified goods because this sector is being considered that there was tax evasion happening so to control and check government has introduced special procedure that such manufacturer need to register all the machine on which they are undertaking manufacturing so this special procedure notification number 4 oblique 2024 need to be followed so in case you are not registering your machine what happened section 122a now saying there will be levy of penalty 1 lakh rupees per machine for non-registration so if you don't take registration then 1 lakh rupees penalty per machine and that is in addition to so this is a 1 lakh plus any other penalty under chapter 15 or chapter 19 of this act so 122a which is new section starting with non obstantic lodge notwithstanding anything contained in the section 
leaving a penalty of 1 lakh rupees for non-registration of machine by such manufacture of uh, tobacco pan masala as prescribed as a special procedure for registration 1 lakh rupees would be penalty in addition to penalty under chapter 15 or chapter 19. This uh, section further says that uh, such machine can be seized or confiscated. No confiscation if you pay the penalty and you get such register, such machine registered within three days from the communication of penalty order. Yani 8 lakh rupee ki penalty for non-registration. Even seizure or confiscation ho sakta hai is machine ka. But aapko 8 lakh rupee ki penalty, agar aap chaate hai confiscation na ho, to penalty pay ki jiye. Or 1 lakh rupee ki penalty per machine hai for non-registration. Or within three days from the date of communication of penalty order, aap is machine ko register. A new section is now proposed to be inserted. Section 122A. This change pertaining to GST law. But overall to summarize, Honorable Finance Minister has also talked about GST growth story in our overall GDP. She has said that GST is a one nation, one tax, one market. And uh, she talked about that GST has contributed a lot for our economy to grow. We started with 68 lakh registered person when GST got implemented July 1, 2017. As again 68 lakh, we are 1.4 crore registered person as on date. And collection, GST collection, which was around 90,000 crore rupees per month on an average when we started. It is now ranging around 1.66 lakh crore rupees per month on an average. It is becoming new normal. And our chairperson of CBIC, C. Sanjay Agarbal ji, had stated that the financial year 25, this new normal going to be 1.7 lakh crore rupees per month on an average. Yes, GST growth has contributed. And even uh, Honorable Finance Minister has referred that there was some survey done by some agency. 94% industrialists have said GST is a positive. So, organized sector is advocating GST is positive. And even it is being stated by 80% respondent that uh, with GST, there is optimization in supply chain. Tax arbitrage is being minimized, cascading of taxes is being done away with and thereby reduction in logistic cost and other taxes which is helping to reduce the prices, make the prices competitive for ultimate consumer because consumer is the king of the market. In the last one concluding word, India is growing and growing faster across the world. I am very much hopeful about these facts and figures which I narrated to you. Rest assured, GST is a growth story. Not only for this decade, it will continue for this century. For this century, it will continue. And if we are growing by 7%, let's say for 5 to 10 years, which I am hopeful about, then none can stop us to become Big Sit Bharat develop India by 2047 Amritkal. Look forward for our growth story for our own Bharat. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.